The following podcast was originally recorded and released for my folks over on the Patreon and contains all kinds of spoilers for episode four of WandaVision, the episode that teases you into thinking that it's going to answer all of your questions. But does it? Does it really? Proceed at your own risk. Hello and welcome to another episode of My Other Podcast. I'm your host and my name's Steven. Oh boy, I don't really know how to start this. I don't know. This episode's going to be all about WandaVision episode four. I will be spoiling the crap out of it. So buckle up, folks. I have seven pages of notes. Seven pages. Uh, I mean, they're small pages. They're a uh, freaking notebook, you know, not notebook, freaking notepads. I am so discombobulated and out of sorts following this episode because so much, so much happened in such a little amount of time. I mean, they answered, I feel like they answered a lot of questions and then of course asked other questions on top of that, which I love and I hate all at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make sense of my notes I'm going to try to go through what happened in the episode, pointing out little various things that I may have noticed. And then I'm going to talk about the theories again, because I think after this episode, some theories may have changed. First of all, I just want to say uh, I am loving the fact that Monica Rambeau is on this show, which rhymes. Monica Rambeau is on this show. I mentioned it in the last episode. She was my Captain Marvel from the Avengers in the 80s, and I really like that character, and I love that she's on this show, and I do hope that eventually she does get powers and become a super-powered individual like she is in the comics, but so far we haven't seen any evidence of that, but we actually opened this show in the past. Monica, or as she's known in Westview, Geraldine, Monica, we, we open up with Monica returning from the snap. You remember the whole Infinity War, Endgame, you know, the whole reason that those movies were made, the whole the whole gist of the plot. Thanos gets the Infinity Gems, he snaps his fingers, 50% of the universe snaps out of existence, and then five years later, the Avengers are able to bring them back. Well, Monica apparently was one of these people that snapped, or as they refer to it in this episode, blipped. The blip is what they call it. So she's returning from the snap. She's, of course, very confused. She's in a hospital. She looks over to the... She's not a patient in the hospital. She's sitting in a chair next to a hospital bed. So she was obviously there with somebody. She looks over into the hospital bed. It's it's not only empty. It doesn't look like it's been used. It looks pristine. And right away, she's panicking. And she runs out into the hallway. And more people are snapping back into existence you know, in that very ashy way that they did in the movies. And it's just very chaotic in the hospital as just all these people are coming back. They don't know what's going on. The people who were not snapped, the people who were not affected by the blip, the people who stayed behind, they do understand what's going on, but it's still a very confusing, chaotic time. And this is really, it's really kind of the first time that we've really seen this. And it was quite creepy and uh, very sobering. So she's running through the hospital, and we learn that she's trying to find her mother, Maria, who had been recovering from surgery to remove cancer. She finds the doctor who, uh, or a doctor that knows her, and again, it's a very confusing moment as Monica's trying to find out what happened to her mother. We learn that while the surgery did seem to work at the time, five years ago, two years later, the cancer came back and her mother passed away. So Monica then returns to work. I guess somebody at some point off camera, of course, explains to her what happened. She returns to work at SWORD, Sentient Weapon Observation Response Division. This is an organization like S.H.I.E.L.D., but it was set up to monitor possible threats or even allies from space. And it was actually built by her mother, Maria, who we see her picture on the wall. And she is also known as photon, which it says, it basically, it says Maria and then in quotes, photon Rambo. So I'm assuming that was her call sign as a pilot. Monica meets up with the new acting director who, um, 
she knows from before. She finds out that she has been grounded. They have a conversation as they're walking through the facility and she's asking about the astronaut program. Apparently she's been up in space a number of times and he's explaining that it's that, that it just hasn't been quite the same since the blip. And those folks that have returned, you know, he, he lost half of his astronauts to the blip and those that have returned, um, they're a little gun shy. And he mentions basically that that it's it's not the same sword as it was w- when she was there. And they're focusing more on tech, robots, nanites, that kind of stuff. And she makes a, a, a comment that, did you change the name? Because it's observation and response, not creation. So we're under the impression now that sword is creating sentient weapons, which seems a bit creepy. Monica is then given her first assignment. She finds out that she's been grounded. She's not allowed to go back up into space at this point. It was a guideline that was put into place by her mother after everyone blipped out because her mother believed that everybody would be back. So she put a process in place that basically said if 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 and when they return, they were they are going to be grounded for for a bit as we reevaluate. So she's given her first assignment and she's sent to New Jersey. Someone there, uh, she's there to assist a, an FBI agent, she's told, who is investigating a missing persons case, which she kind of scratches her head at. What is what does S.W.O.R.D. have to do with the missing persons case? And they her, her director basically tells her that uh, they need the use of one of their drones and she's there to babysit. Right. She's she's kind of there to, to deal with the whole drone. Well, she goes to New Jersey and she meets up with an FBI agent on the roadside outside of Westville, New Jersey. They're they're literally parked right next to the big sign that says, Welcome to Westville. Well, our FBI agent is none other than Jimmy Woo, played by Randall Park. He was in Ant-Man and the Wasp. He, uh, he basically tells her that this isn't your typical missing persons case. He was checking in with someone who had been put in the witness protection program, who had been relocated at in, in uh, uh, Westville, and he was not able to get a hold of them. The the whoever it was apparently had disappeared. And so when he started contacting family and friends, it's not that they didn't know where this person was. They didn't know who this person was. There's a couple of uh, police officers there on the roadside as well, and they deny the existence of Westville altogether, even though they're standing right next to the sign. And so Jimmy Wu basically tells her, this is not a missing persons case. It's a missing town. And so she asks him, why hasn't he just gone into town? And he says, because it doesn't want me there. Can't you feel it? And she she gets out the drone, which is a yellow and red helicopter looking thing. And as she's setting it up, she asks, why are we aware of Westville's existence when others are not? Is it a is it a proximity thing? Were we outside of a certain proximity when whatever happened happened? And she launches the drone. It flies towards Westville. It hits this barrier and then it just disappears. And so Monica walks forward and she approaches the barrier and she's she reaches out and kind of touches it. And Jimmy's like, what do you got there? And she goes, some kind of energy barrier. And she starts to stick her hand into it. And he's telling her not to. He's telling her to be cautious. And as she sticks her hand in further, the barrier pulls her inside and she disappears. Well, this is when basically a bunch of government agencies, of course, all form a task force with S.W.O.R.D. and the FBI and the police, and they start gathering experts in various technological fields. And this is when Darcy Lewis, if you remember, she was in uh, the first two Thor movies played by Kat Denning. She shows up in the show. Now, we have known she was going to be on the show at some point. This is the episode in which she arrives. She is now a doctor. When last we saw her in Thor, she uh, I think Thor Dark World, she was still just an intern, but she's now received her doctorate by this point. And she is in this basically like a uh, like an armored van with three other experts. There's a, a nuclear biologist, an expert in artificial intelligence. She is an astrophysicist and, the, and a chemical engineer. Well, once she arrives on the scene, they have a whole like camp set up right outside of town. She sets up her equipment and she discovers right away that the town or at least the the field surrounding the town is giving off what she calls a colossal amount 
of CMBR or cosmic microwave background radiation. And embedded within that or entwined is the word she uses is a broadcast signal. And so she has somebody bring her she she hooks up this piece of equipment with the monitor on it and she's suddenly she can see the TV show WandaVision and so she asks somebody to bring her an old TV not a new TV something that is not flat. And so once the once the folks in charge kind of find out what what's going on they're all gathered around the monitor and they're watching this sitcom and Jimmy at one point they're they're trying to what you know they're trying to figure out what's what is going on here and the the director of sword says where what can you tell me about this signal is it live is it being recorded is it you know where is it generating from and she's like it's being generated from the town and Jimmy says quote so you're saying the universe created a sitcom starring two avengers and they're all just very baffled about this whole thing so basically what we learn here is that yes there is a sitcom basically being played out within this town and the citizens of this town now i had i had said last week that i felt like you know my my theory i felt like that the citizens of the town were not created by wanda but they were actual citizens who were playing the these sitcom roles of themselves and i got most of that true they are citizens of the town. They are playing sitcom roles, but they're they're playing different characters. It's almost like they're being forced to act out these parts of completely different characters. They've been given new names and new backgrounds and and they spend a bit of time just like watching the show and trying to identify who all these other people are and they have a big board that they're putting their, you know, they they figure out they they find somebody on the show, they figure out who it is, they 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 announce the the real the person's name and the character they're playing. They 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 put their sheet up on a board. But one of the really fun things about this episode, Jimmy has this whiteboard that he's writing various questions and whatnot down on. Like we he indicates on the board that this field is a is a five mile radius around the town. He writes down on one side of the board who is behind this. And the only thing he has on that list is scrolls with the question mark. And then he has what we don't know. And he is asking a bunch of questions. And at one point, Darcy even asked a couple of questions. Basically, it's the same questions that us as viewers have been asking as we're watching the show. He asks why hexagonal shape. And we can see on a screen that the that apparently the field that is surrounding this town is in the shape of a hexagon. He asks why sitcoms. Um, same time and space question mark and is vision alive so they they discover as they're watching the show that Geraldine or Monica they find her she's on the show playing this character Geraldine Darcy comes up with this idea to shoot a signal into the radio that's on the show to try to communicate with Wanda and that's where we get from episode two with Jimmy trying to speak to her through the radio and asking her who's doing this to you Wanda we also learn they at one point they find when Wanda finds the the helicopter that's in color in the bushes it is what Darcy refers to as a retro version of the sword drone so the drone that or at least one of the drones because we see them just sending drone after drone through the field so one of them Wanda discovers but once it goes through the field it turns into what looks like an old helicopter and Jimmy theorizes that to when something goes through the field, the look of it is changed to fit the the stage dressing of the show, basically. Or and Darcy kind of says, I think it's Darcy that says it, or it's just eliminated altogether. I don't remember which one says it, but this explains the man in the beekeeper outfit. So we see them send a guy in a hazmat suit into the sewers to try to access the town. They're postulating that this field does not extend underground. It's only above ground and that they could get through the field through the sewers. So when this guy, he goes into the sewers, the field does extend underground. When he goes through the field, his hazmat suit is changed into a beekeeper's outfit and bees are suddenly around him to fit with that whole aesthetic. He's got a tether tied to him it changes into a jump rope and disconnects from him and that's how that happened but 
the question that we have now at this point, when Wanda sees him and she says no, and we get kind of that rewind of the show and they're back inside the house and the beekeeper's gone, did she murder him as he popped out of existence? What happened to this sword agent in the beekeeper's outfit? We don't know. That's that's a that's a answer we don't have. That's a question that we don't have an answer to. We also see the confrontation between Wanda and Monica after Monica kind of comes to herself just for a little bit when they're looking at Wanda's new twin babies. And she asks Wanda, you know, if Ultron was, Ultron killed your brother Petro, right? And so we see that whole scene and we see it in the uh, widescreen format. We see a bit more of it. And as there, when, as, you know, in the third episode, Wanda's asking her, what, what is that around your neck? What does that symbol stand for? Well, we see more and, Monica is telling Wanda, you know, just let's just get back to talking about your kids. And Wanda says, no, you are a stranger and an outsider. And right now you are trespassing here and I want you to leave. And then she's as she's saying this, she's wiggling her fingers and the red energy is coming out of her hands. And she literally she uses her magic powers, her her energy powers to lift Monica up and launch her through the wall of the house, outside, and then through the barrier into the real world. And all of the the government agents and their cars and whatnot, they come and they they grab Monica. And as Monica is coming, as Monica is coming to, as she's waking up and realizing where she is, she says, it's Wanda. It's all Wanda. And that's when we go back to Wanda and Vision. And there's this really creepy moment because Vision comes into the house He asks Wanda where Geraldine is. She turns to look at Vision. And for a moment, it is the the black and white dead Vision with the top of his his head caved in where Thanos had had pulled the Mind Stone from his head and just, you know, just put a big gaping hole in his head. And she she kind of starts for a moment and looks away, turns back and he's back to Vision again. And Vision comes to her and he says, we don't have to stay here. We could go wherever we want. And she says, no, we can't. This is our home. And he says, are you sure? And she says, oh, don't worry, darling. I have everything under control. And that's actually the moment when we when Monica says, it's Wanda. It's all Wanda. And then we go back to Vision and Wanda and they, they eat, they're each holding one of the children and they're sitting down on the couch. And she says, what should we watch tonight? And she turns on the TV and they both look at the TV and it looks like they're looking at us, the viewer, and they're both smiling quite creepily. And the episode ends to the song Voodoo Child by Jimi Hendrix. So everybody has been throwing out all of these theories regarding who the big bad is, uh, whether it's Mephisto or AIM or Hive or whoever. Well, this episode now wants you to believe that this is all Wanda's doing. Wanda's the big bad. There's nobody else behind it. It's all her. And frankly, I'm not sure what to believe at this point because there is somewhat of a precedent to this being Wanda. Because if you remember the story Avengers Disassembled, Wanda had set a series of random attacks against the Avengers, destroys the Avengers mansion, kills Hawkeye. And the reasoning behind it at the time, they they do, they add a little something to it later, but the reasoning behind it at the time was that Wanda had been driven insane by the loss of her children. Now, in the comic book world, we learn that the children, her children, uh, obviously she's married to uh, what in, in essence is a robot or a synthesized human, a synthoid. They, they, a human and a robot can't have children. Well, she had used her magic to wish these children into life, and then she loses her children, and they're saying in this story that because of that, she has gone insane and has used her her reality warping powers to destroy the Avengers. Well, that can be a very valid argument for what's happening in this show, because really, when you think about Wanda's past, she is not the most stable tool in the shed. She loses her parents in a bombing. During the bombing, she spends two days in terror staring at a shell that was designed by Tony Stark, 
trapped in the ruins of their of their apartment building, waiting for the shell to explode, which it never does. But they're waiting for these like two days, just expecting the shell to explode and kill both her and her brother. Probably not a fun two days to spend. She's experimented on by Hydra and Strucker and giving given these superpowers. She's manipulated by Ultron. Her brother is then murdered by Ultron. She then blames herself in Captain America Civil War for the explosion in Lagos that kills several Wakandan humanitarian workers. She falls in love with the Vision, is about to build a life with the Vision, when then he suddenly ripped from her life, murdered by Thanos. So yeah, she could have easily snapped, gone insane, created this whole new new world, this whole new reality, just for her, just so Vision can be a part of her life, just so she can live what she thinks is the idyllic, you know, happy life of marriage with children. And yet... There's still some questions that need to be answered. There are certain characters during this episode that are unaccounted for. They make a big deal out of pointing out who all the different quote unquote characters on this TV show are. Hang, you know, this is so and so who's playing this character and they hang their, their sheet on the wall. You know, these different citizens in this town. But we, where's Agnes? Agnes doesn't show up on this list. Agnes isn't pointed out. Who is Agnes? Because we all believe she's Agatha Harkness. And then there's the character of Dottie. There's a bunch of theories rolling around the internet about Dottie. She was in the second episode. She was kind of the the leader of the the women's, uh, you know, organization that was doing the talent show for the children. Well, some people think that she is either Mephisto or that she is Clea who is apparently an al- uh, uh, an ally of Doctor Strange from the Dark Dimension. And then, of course, why have we never seen Ralph, Agnes's husband? She talks about Ralph all the time. Why have we never seen him? As a matter of fact, what's up with this missing person that Jimmy was looking for that supposedly lived in this town? That You would think that at some point they would have pointed that out. Well, hey, we found my missing person. He's playing Herb, you know, or or whoever. We don't know anything about that. So... Yes, this very well could be Wanda going insane and has created this new reality. Or in the end, it could be someone someone manipulating her. The Avengers disassembled storyline, I guess later they kind of retconned in this thing where Doctor Doom has taken credit for controlling Wanda during the disassembled storyline. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if that has ever come to anything. And then there's also the rumor that, well... It's not a rumor, but we know that this TV show is basically supposed to set up or it launches into the new Doctor Strange movie. Well, in Avengers Disassembled, who shows up there near the end of that to tell everybody that Wanda has gone insane and is going to help them? And he ends up putting Wanda in a coma and blah, blah, blah. Well, it was Doctor Strange. We know that Wanda is going to be in the new Doctor Strange movie. There's a rumor that there is supposed to be a special guest actor in one of these episodes and that the guy playing Vision, Paul Bettany, I, I, I never remember how to say his name. He's very excited about working with this actor because he's never worked with him before or something. Well, he was never in any scene with Benedict Cumberbatch, who plays Doctor Strange. So are we going to see Doctor Strange by the end of this show? Is he going to step in to fix things because Wanda has gone insane? Is that why he has to come in? And is that why Wanda is in the movie? Because he's got to take her under his wing? Or is he going to step in and save her from whoever is manipulating her? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen at this point, but the episode was really good. It, again, it answered a lot of questions, but then asked so much more. It's like, It's like this episode tricked you into feeling like we're going to explain a lot of stuff to you and now you're going to understand what's going on by the time the episode's over. But I don't know squat at this point. I don't know what's going on. I don't know who the bad guy is. I am so looking forward to the next episode and I hope you guys are right there along with me. Let me know what you think in all the usual places. Until then, this has been the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you again later.
Bye, Daddy. Bye, bye, Daddy. Good job. Yay.